Welcome to our midweek Eucharist at Christ Church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Glory to God in the highest. And, and peace, peace to his people on earth. Lord, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Christ, our Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil, and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We have lived by our own strength, and not by the power of your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. Lord, in your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine upon us. May your ways be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. Then the land will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear him. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Even after Jesus had done all these miraculous signs in their presence, they would still not believe in him. This was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet. Lord, who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For this reason they could not believe, because, as Isaiah says elsewhere, he has blinded their eyes and deadened their hearts. So they can neither see with their eyes, nor understand with their hearts, nor turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. Yet at the same time, many even among the leaders believed in Jesus. But because of the Pharisees, they would not confess their faith for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue. 
for they loved the praise from men more than praise from God. Then Jesus cried out, When a person believes in me, he does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. When he looks at me, he sees the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. As for the person who hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world but to save it. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. That word which I spoke will condemn him at the last day. For I did not speak of my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. I know that his command leads to eternal life. So whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Let's pray together. Gracious Lord, we thank you for your glory, your beauty, your wonder. We thank you that you came to teach us about the Father. Open our eyes, our hearts, our minds, our ears. Help us to see you today, we ask in your name. Amen. There's a very moving account of Jesus just before the text that I read this morning from the Gospel. And that is that Jesus has already entered the city of Jerusalem. We're going back just slightly here. And he is speaking to the people. And while he is speaking to the people, he is anticipating his death. And he says, now my soul is deeply troubled. And he cries to the Father, if you could save me from this, but nonetheless it is your will. And then the Father says to him, I will glorify you. And the Son says, Lord, Father, glorify your name. And the Father speaks in an audible way, and the people think that it's thunder. But in fact, there's something profound going on here between Jesus and the Father. And then straight after this amazing, moving encounter, which one can hardly imagine what it must have looked like as Jesus wrestled there in front of the people and crying to the Father even in their presence. And it's not long after that before someone starts asking relatively trite, simple questions. It just breaks your heart. It just breaks your heart. And then it tells us that when Jesus had finished speaking to them there, he left and hid himself from them. The writer of the Gospel then goes on to say that the people couldn't understand, couldn't hear what was happening, because following the words of Isaiah, they had so resisted God's truth, many of them, that, as he puts it, God was hardening them, not unkindly, not unjustly. But the idea here is that God essentially says, Stay in your darkness until you maybe reach a point that you realize how desperately you need me. But interestingly, the gospel writer then goes on to say, Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. It's an amazing sentence. I must be honest, I had hardly noticed it before in my reading, Isaiah said these things because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. I don't understand all that the Gospel writer is saying here, of course. 
But it does seem that what it's saying is that this young prophet, because it was at that point in his life at his call, during at the time of his call, it seems that he saw this vision in the temple in Isaiah chapter 6. And the writer is saying that in the midst of the sea of mediocrity, a kind of a sea of blindness, of religiosity for the most part, and huge political and social troubles and inequality and struggle. In the midst of all of this, this young prophet had this vision of God in the temple and the angels crying, holy, 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 to this God, the Lord of hosts. And Isaiah, of course, cries out that he's a man of unclean lips, but he worships and adores this God and gives himself to him. In some way, this gospel writer is saying to us that Isaiah managed to see the beauty of God, the very glory of God that Jesus is now again revealing, that Jesus is revealing in the Incarnation that Isaiah saw this glory revealed even when Jesus was still, so to speak, on the bosom of the Father. I think Isaiah's, uh, the prophet Isaiah's heart broke when he had this vision of this beautiful, transcendent, holy, majestic God. And he had a sense of the power of this God and the presence of this God on earth and the desire of God to break into this blind, for the most part, blind humanity. And he realized that the people just went on their way. And even more than that, the people went on with their own religious practices but failed to see this beautiful God. And the writer, then, is drawing our attention to the fact that the people of Jesus' time were doing just the same. Here is Jesus speaking, doing miracles, revealing the Father, and many of the people failed to see that. Others, he says, did believe, but they were afraid of what the religious leaders might do, and to them, if they might cast them out of a synagogue, and so they pushed away this awareness of God and didn't allow it to take over their lives. But Jesus cries out, when someone believes in me, he doesn't believe in me only, but the one who sent me. And when he looks at me, he sees the one who sent me. Very beautiful stuff. There's this direct revelation of God when one opens one's eyes. I want to put to you that this really is what spiritual awakening is about. When we've been in our dream of going about our daily lives and ordering things the way we're used to doing things, a moment comes when somehow this God breaks into us, into our awareness. And Jesus at that time calls us to respond profoundly, deeply. I remember the first time that I came to Christ in any personal way and giving myself to him as a young man and asking him to come to me, live with me, be my Lord, Savior. And I remember the change that happened in me. And I remember subsequent times, too, when the same thing had to happen again. It's as if I had to fall in love with him yet again. I remember actually being in a church in the USA, um, Christ Church in Denver, looking out on these snowy, uh, snow-capped Rockies uh, across the altar, because there was glass behind the altar, and sitting there and worshipping. And then we sang. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And I remember that as I sang, this awareness of this beautiful God just sank deeply into me. I remember another time in my life when I had been deeply disillusioned, profoundly disillusioned by some unethical conduct of Christian leaders that severely hurt someone else. And it was quite a long time that I struggled to get back into my relationship with God. And I feared losing my faith in Christ. I really did. I cried to him, don't let me lose my faith. And then when I sat with a friend one morning at breakfast, and he understood my struggle, and he looked at me with wise, understanding eyes, and he said, but Vic, maybe the anger that you feel is God's anger. And as he spoke those words of truth, my soul broke, the dam broke. And something happened, and I loved Jesus again. I don't know what these moments are, but these wonderful moments when this truth descends upon one. And we're invited into this relationship. And it seems that if we close ourselves, the image here, interestingly, the Old Testament images that God says, go on your way then. And perhaps you will come to your senses like the prodigal son. But the image here, interestingly, is that when Jesus saw that these people weren't taking him seriously, it says when he'd finished speaking, he left and hid himself from them. Not very different from the Old Testament God hiding his truth from these people who shunned it. I think what God most, most wants to offer us is a life, a light with the awareness of his presence, the awareness of his beauty, the awareness of his profound love. But more than that, a world, a universe that is sacred, sacred because he fills it. And I believe he's inviting us to live out of that consciousness moment by moment of the sacredness of life, the sacredness of one another. And Jesus is the one who mediates that life and that awareness to us. I want to read just some words from Thomas Merton that have always spoken to me profoundly. I think that he speaks to this very thing. He says, self-realization, in the true religious sense, is less an awareness of ourselves than an awareness of the God to whom we are drawn in the depths of our own being. Less an awareness of ourselves than an awareness of the God to whom we are drawn in the depths of our being. We become real and experience our actuality not when we pause to reflect upon our own self as an isolated individual entity, but rather when transcending ourselves and passing beyond reflection, we center our whole soul upon the God who is our life. When transcending ourselves and passing beyond reflection, we center our whole soul upon the God who is our life. That is to say, we fully realize ourselves when we cease to be conscious of ourselves and separateness and know nothing but the one God who is above all knowledge. The recognition of our true self in the divine image is then a recognition of the fact that we are known and loved by God. As such, it is utterly different from any self-awareness no matter how deeply spiritual it may seem. It is utterly different from any other kind of spiritual awakening, except perhaps the awakening of life that takes place within a man when he suddenly discovers that he is indeed loved 
by another human being. This human awakening is only a faint analogue of the divine awakening that takes place when the image in our spirit comes to itself and realises that it has been seen and called by God and that its destiny is to be carried toward him. take the liberty of reading just a poem of David White's that speaks so much of this. So that whether it's Abraham who sees Jesus' day, whether it's Isaiah who looks and sees the glory of God and the glory of Jesus, or whether it's Moses at the burning bush, there is this encounter where God breaks through. That day I saw beneath dark clouds the passing light over the water. And I heard the voice of the world speak out. I knew then, as I had before, that life is no passing memory of what has been, nor the remaining pages in a great book waiting to be read. I knew then, as I had before, that life is no passing memory of what has been, nor the remaining pages in a great book waiting to be read. It is the opening of eyes long closed. It is the vision of far-off things, seen for the silence they hold. It is the heart, after years of secret conversing, speaking out loud in the clear air. It is Moses in the desert, fallen to his knees before the lit bush. It is the man throwing away his shoes as if to enter heaven and finding himself astonished, opened at last, fallen in love with solid ground. Let's pray together. Gracious Lord, you have made us to know you. And Jesus, as you make the Father known to us, as you pull us into that relationship with the Trinity and with one another, you touch us in ways that are not only private, secret ways, but you touch us in ways that move us out into life, to touch the world, to speak to the world, to speak on your behalf. In this time of stress and distress on the face of the earth, many, Lord, starving, because they cannot work in our own country and in many places around the world. Many who have lost their jobs. Some, Lord, who at this moment lie ill, afraid of death. Others, Lord, have died and family are bereaved. And political leaders struggle to know what to do. Give wisdom, Lord, to us all. Give strength to those who minister medically. And somehow, in the midst of all of this, may we have a fresh vision of you. Touch this world. Touch humankind, which you love so deeply and lead us into this fresh encounter with the God of heaven and earth. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to join us as we partake of the Eucharist, and we remember that Jesus comes and really it is Jesus who feeds us. So 
even if you are not able to partake of the bread and wine, that is still a time where we can kneel before him and ask him to come, touch us, heal us, open our eyes, and love us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit you call us to new birth, in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, we offer you our prayers, with angels and archangels and a whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son born in human flesh. He is the Word existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross, by your power you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and sets your people free to be his body in the world. On the night that he was given up to death, knowing that his hour had come and having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take. Eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love. 
until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us pray. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that you have set before us, so that we and all your children may be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish you, strengthen and settle you in the faith and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be among you and remain with you always amen, amen. go in the peace of christ alleluia alleluia thanks be to god alleluia alleluia <laughs>